Good morning, everyone. For the last session of this morning, we'll have Philippe Caluza, with, who will talk to us about uh, bootstrapping another architecture using LLVM IR. Please welcome him. Yes, hello. Um, so in the last session, uh, Sylvester uh, told us about um, yeah, mass building uh, the Debian archive um, using Clang, uh, the standard C compiler uh, for the LLVM project. And um, I want to talk to you all about uh, yeah, what I'm planning to do on top of this work and uh, taking it in, in a bit of a new direction. Uh, this is very experimental and much more work in progress uh, even than the, the rebuild with Clang work, so um, bear with me, I, I'll introduce the, the what uh, I've been doing and um, hopefully this will be interesting to some more people than just me. Um, yeah, so the I'll structure the talk uh, talking again a little bit about uh, LLVM for those that uh, did not follow the last session, uh, maybe in the stream. Um, what I'm planning to do with it uh, and what um, this would give us and what problems we will have. Uh, I will talk about the Pinnacle project uh, that's uh, been done by the Chromium developers. Um, I will show a little bit what, uh, what my experimentation has yielded and uh, in the end I invite you all to discuss um, with me uh, if this is interesting and uh, if we should take this in, in a new direction. Um, just a quick show of hands, who here has had experience with uh, building um, stuff with Clang, um, linking with a LLVM link list and so on? Okay. Uh, so I'll try to introduce the concept. Uh, since my last AppConf talk was at UC7, allow me <laughs> to reintroduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Philipp Kaluza. Um, I did study at the Technical University of Brunswick in Germany. Um, since 2010, um, I, I finished there and um, teaching there still a bit uh, courses about system administration. Um, of course, promoting Debian doing that. Uh, since 2011, I've uh, been freelancing. I'm now based in Berlin. Um, just yeah, general IT consulting work. <coughs> so, uh, what is LLVM? LLVM stands for Low Level Virtual Machine, which is not really anymore. <laughs> um, it's uh, they started out with um, yeah, just describing an abstract register-based uh, machine for um, having some, some code within a compiler tool chain uh, that is um, above the, the emitters for a certain hardware architecture, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, quite below the, the SSA trees in the, in the compiler. So uh, a number of medium and low level optimization steps you would want to do in a compiler tool chain um, you can do very well uh, on the LLVM bitcode um, or the, the in compiler internal binary representation of that. It evolved from there to become infrastructure for building uh, compilers, optimizers, uh, static analyzers. Um, you can uh, emit C code again, beautify it, uh, and uh, yeah, there many research projects are taking this in uh, very many interesting directions at the moment. Um, the kind of assembly language um, for this uh, very virtual hardware architecture is called IR, Immediate Representation. Um, if you uh, assemble this uh, assembly language, into um, some binary code. Uh, they call it bit code because it's not byte aligned. Um, and basically, 
except for the compiler itself or the lower parts in the tool chain, can read e either both formats or at least the bitcode format uh, again and do their optimizations, transformations, and so on in there. Um, IR and bitcode are roughly um, oh let me bring this mappable, one to one mappable. So uh, for a certain IR, you can actually generate a number of different bitcode files, but uh, you can always get go back to the same IR sans formatting uh, that you had before uh, doing that. <coughs> Yeah, the LLVM toolchain, um, uh, as I said, contains emitters for uh, different target target architectures, um, AMD64, x86 uh, for 32 bits, ARM, those are the ones I played with. There's quite a number more. Um, so of course there's a just-in-time compiler uh, for that and also an interpreter, which uh, can just run through the bitcode interpreter while uh, if you s use the LLI, so LLVM interpreter um, binary to run something, normally if it's not on a very obscure architecture, it will try to, to run through the JIT engine. And so I'm interested in using uh, the, this whole system and taking it into the direction, yeah, can we use this for code distribution? Let me tell, m uh, okay, uh, before I wanted to, to show the um, compiler pipeline, again, quickly, it's, pretty clear, so we have uh, preprocessors, it's included in the Clang binary compiler. You can also GCC style um, call out to different preprocessors compilers if you like to. Uh, both of them uh, will, if, you if uh, configured correctly, output bitcode. And uh, the whole tool chain can call out to different linkers. Um, They've kind of standardized now on using gold. They're shipping a plugin for gold that can read the LLVM bitcode. Um, and if you link together a number of object files using this, uh, this gold plugin, it can actually do um, the first uh, number of, of link time optimizations there. You know, so link time inlining is one of the big topics, of course that uh, will be uh, very interesting to do there. They also have a LLVM link, um, which just links together bitcode uh, with, with other bitcode, outputs bitcode again. LLVM LV, which is a bit of a hybrid, can, can run in both modes. Yeah, so and so we can, we can output elves.so files or something, and or bitcode, which, we, uh, which are also no named .so in the tool chain. <coughs> really quickly, um, the LLVM compiler and the um, tool chain, uh, so the Clang compiler and LLVM tool chain um, have BSD style licensing. Apple didn't like uh, the GPL anymore uh, at some point. Um, the GCC also said, uh, was very skeptical if. Um, making the whole core of the compiler more modular um, would lead to people circumventing the GPL there. So they, for a long time, they said, no, no plugins for the GCC tool chain. Um, reluctantly, they're opening up after they found a nice legal hack on how to ensure that most GCC plugins will still be GPL. And so, in, in GCC, something is slowly changing and it's becoming more modular, but uh, only after big players, uh, especially Apple, said, well, let's uh, go with this new interesting research project, LLVM, 
uh, back that, and uh, we have BSD licensing, licensing, and we can do whatever we want with it. So um, at the moment, I don't care about the the politics here, one way or the other. But it's important um, if we're talking about LLVM to know historically that this was a factor in uh, why this ecosystem system exists. And for some Debian developers, I imagine it will be important in uh, thinking if they want to support uh, the whole thing. <coughs> so what I want to do, um, I want to use the compiler tool chain, let it output LLVM bit code, and uh, ship these in Debian packages. Yeah. So we would have uh, Debian packages for a new architecture um, that charges this yeah, abstract low-level virtual machine. Um, and then we could do things with this on the charging machine. Um, LLVM bit code in itself, though, is not 100% um, architecture independent. I will come to that in a bit. But as far as possible, I would like to uh, yeah, target generic subset and be architecture independent in, in what we are creating there. Um, how do I go about this? Um, First, it's possible to register bit code itself as an executable format with a Linux kernel. Uh, that breaks in very interesting ways uh, once you're inside a chroot or shroot or other built system, uh, built infrastructure. But in general, this is possible, which means that the old cross compiled problem of one of these binaries is supposed to run uh, during my package build and do something useful. And the other of these binaries uh, is supposed to be generated for the target, target architecture. And uh, my whole uh, automake setup is, is not really set up to do something sensible with this uh, or differentiate between the two of them. This problem goes away if we uh, say, well, we have bit code. We can um, execute that. So this is a problem that we should solve. but would mean changing every Debian source package there is and making them all really clean, cr uh, cross-compile clean, and I'm a bit skeptical on, on the prospect of that. So I worked around that. <coughs> yeah, the packages we are getting out of there, we can look at also a bit like uh, Arch all packages um, for Java bytecode or the CLI, so um, .NET bytecode, mono bytecode, uh, we ship, we generate them also on, on one machine and ship this, uh, this bytecode in Debian packages. And we already know and assume on the target machine uh, we need something that helps us execute that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, yes. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 code is CIL and the common language infrastructure is the is the CLI kind of thing. Yeah, but I want to generate this from existing source packages. I uh, want to use existing C later C plus plus code, not change it as far as possible, and basically we're ju just targeting a different ISA um, instruction set architecture that are very different, but not as different as, as these stack-based um, systems are, so like uh, Java and, and CLI. <coughs> so what does this give us? So first, uh, I'm a developer. I like to fiddle with my development environment, and I like to <laughs> Uh, to get this, uh, um, yeah, into a point where I can do new and interesting things with it, <coughs> and uh, that certainly is the case. It has been, pr it has proven very interesting, uh, also a bit annoying. <laughs> uh, we would get a large repository of software um, that we have compiled under very 
defined conditions, um, but we can say uh, this software <coughs> we have in Debian as LLVM bitcode. Uh, we know that this bitcode uh, comes from a clean build B and um, should do what it does well. Um, on the target machine, not on the target architecture, we can start uh, optimizing there. We can decide uh, on what functions we want to inline based on how much cache pressure we expect. Yeah. So uh, even if I target AMD64, an Atom and uh, uh, Core i7 have uh, vastly different properties there. And uh, it is interesting um, to yeah, try optimizing this really when we know what machine it's going to run on. <coughs> we could uh, use this to try to bring up new ports faster. So if there's new um, archi architecture like uh, ARM64 being created, the LLVM guys usually are there pretty fast. And so uh, once we have the, the linker and LLVM interpreter, uh, just in time rendering and so on, running there, we could have a, bu a bunch of our tool chain available on the new ports. And uh, of course, something like the Raspberry Pi port needn't have happened in this way if we had a tool chain where we um, do very late post installation optimizations. LLVM has been looked at for GPGPU computing. I'm not really too deep into that topic, but if we can reuse parts of our tool chain there, that might be interesting. Yeah, I talked about the late inlining already. LLVM is not really well suited to doing all of that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it sucks a little bit, and um, uh, I'll try to explain why. It's not aimed to be a code distribution mechanism originally. Yeah. We, until now, the there's no compatibility guarantees in the LLVM bitcode. That has been found also to be a problem in the LLVM community. I'm not sure how much better it's getting. The compiler assumes a certain target architecture before it outputs the bitcode. Um, we will need to work with the compiler to make less assumptions. Um, the bitcode includes a lot of details about calling conventions and linker details. Um. <coughs> Sorry, might I ask somebody to <laughs> get a little bit of water for me? <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Uh, so the um, the things is that that the whole tool chain should work against l linking parts of a. Microsoft Visual C project. So all these options for linking details and so on are included in that bitcode. The LLVM bitcode allows for uninitialized variables to be present there, which you wouldn't do in, in Java or .NET bitcode, uh, bytecode. <coughs> um, but they said, well, C says is undefined. We want to be able to carry this, uh, this is undefined state around with us. So let's uh, put this in the syntax. So in a way, uh, the LLVM bitcode is a bit too low level to do that. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, as a caveat, um, the old Java adage of write once, debug everywhere, 
could apply here as well. Um, yeah, the, the front end compiler uh, generates just quite a lot of details in knowledge of what linker will link this together and uh, what, what is the target architecture to run. So actually we want, uh, we will have two linking phases. Yeah? One during the compiler of the Debian package, one on the target machine. And for the first, first uh, linking phase, we want to make the linker a bit dumber. <coughs> Other things that might happen. Um, just linking together LLVM bit code is more like a static linking. Until now, we don't have tracking of this library um, will be linked in later. You can just leave some symbols open while linking, but uh, the information of, well, on, on the target machine, uh, link in this .so file tree, um, we don't have. So uh, this is something we can work around, but if we want to make it really clean so that uh, we don't have just a lot of static um, links lying around on the target machine later, and the target machine can can simply uh, apply security updates. This might uh, be addressed very detailed and uh, might need to be addressed very, very detailed in our tool set. LD preload is not a thing at the moment. <coughs> it is, however, very interesting. The um, to work with LLVM IR. There's just uh, lots and lots of papers coming out in the last years, um, just working in this modular ecosystem, playing with it, uh, taking the tool chain in new directions. And I really want to get in on that for Debian. It is possible to define a LLVM bit code ABI that's architecture agnostic, where the bit code doesn't really um, include so many details about the target machine that this will run on. <coughs> the Chromium project has done that. Uh, they have the Na NACL, maybe you've read about that, Native Client System, where they built a really nice sandbox on for running natively compiled C or C++ code that targets this sandbox. So you cannot do system calls or a very limited number of them. You cannot uh, exec or link in arbitrary, ar arbitrary code from the target machine. And uh, then they note as well, this is actually really annoying for our developers if they have to compile everything three times uh, into 32-bit, into 64-bit and um, ARM 32 bit. That's the ones they have supporting at the moment. So they started to uh, think about also shipping um, LLVM bit code, just targeting this architecture. And uh, the compile, if I understood the paper correctly, actually is happening within the sandbox, which is uh, interesting. And so they also went ahead and defined just a number of um, constraints on the bit code so that they could say, OK, we're confident that this bit code will really uh, be able to, to run on different machines. <coughs> I'll show the slide first. <coughs> this is just from the um, document they have. And they're saying, well, yeah, the in, in our Pinnacle machine, the address space is 32 bits. Um, addresses are always 32 bits wide. Um, we have the integer byte order, low endian. And I think these are reasonable assumptions um, to make about your target system. Yeah? It does mean, once you start making these assumptions, that you cannot just link in libgtk, the native version, on the target machine. 
Yeah, this, this needs to be clear to us if we're doing this work. Um, if we want to link against 42-bit uh, AMD64 or libgtk, we need to tell our compiler to target that. If we say, well, we want to link uh, in on the target machine other LLVM bit code, which also falls within the set of constraints, that's very possible to do that. <coughs> so um, I see this project within Debian, possibly, if it goes anywhere at all, going in one of two directions. The first I've dubbed architecture LLVM, which means uh, we assume that we run, let's for now say on a Linux kernel, we have uh, system calls that we can call. We generate LLVM bit code with an ABI to be uh, defined, like I just showed on the Pinnacle slide, similar to that, but not assuming we run in, in the Pinnacle sandbox. So, um, what would be the point of doing that? Well, the universal OS, as Debian, as we like to call Debian, um, has just a whole bunch of software, and we would have the option of linking and optimizing that on the target. Yeah. That would give us the advantages for porting and so on that I talked about earlier. We might constrain that project even further, though. Uh, I've dubbed this uh, possibility architecture pinnacle. And we just assume that we run in the pinnacle sandbox. So we can call, uh, we, we can use less C code unmodified. We can not do an, an, an unlimited number of system calls. Um, we might have a libc running in there. And the pinnacle guys actually have something like that. That uh, tries to solve a lot of problems with a very small setup. Uh, Sys calls, and that would mean that we jump onto the bandwagon of the Pinnacle project and just give them, yeah, lots of Debian love, uh, export lots of code that we have um, into that environment. And for now, Pinnacle is just a browser sandbox, but I'm pretty sure that some people at Google are thinking about uh, also using that to sandbox code on the server. I don't have any proof of that, but I would if they I were them. So if that becomes popular, it would be nice really to say, well, then we have lots of Debian code to, to work with. <coughs> uh, a third option would be to uh, compile a lot of, um, a as many packages as possible, and then lynch and check or something which packages could live within the pinnacle constraints and, and mark them, yeah, just to be complete. But I think for now, um, the scope of this should be limited to, to one or the other. We should find a clear way to go forward on this. Um, Okay, I wanted to give two little demos. <coughs> um, so the one is really uh, some small code. It's a little C code. My cursor is, ah, it's over there. <laughs> So I just copied it from, from some example. Here, this does a multiplication, does a printf. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that doesn't work also. Let me see. It's cut off a little bit, but I think you can get the gist of it. Yeah. Sorry? So th this is not very interesting code, but it's 
does compile into um, some bit code. That would be the molite.o, and the dot .s is the representation we have. Um, no, that's not actually this one. Is the bit code. So this, uh, th this is uh, the LLVMIR. And I broke my demo. <laughs> um, I had a copy of this uh, compiled on um, on a Raspberry Pi, and it's possible actually to to run this on um, wi w using the LLI to run this on. Um, my Intel machine. So uh, let's do this one. Okay, yeah. Uh, the bit code does include the triple that this is compiled for, and um, you have to override it. So the this uh, the A out BC is the one uh, compiled on the Pi, and I don't know where the LLI interpreter went. So if you want to call, uh, execute the bit code that is um, uh, that is from a different machine, you have to s to override this. Uh, Okay, all, all these tools have the hmm? M. Help, yeah. All these tools have nice different command line options. Was it M target? Do you know? M arch. I think M arch is the right one, yeah? yeah. I should have tried this again this morning. So if I override this to run on the PC here, no, I already have it in there. Uh, that would help, yeah. Okay, this demo doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I I did get something sensible uh, out of that. So, uh, but this was just to to show that this uh, it could be compiled. So, I just took the um, the LLVM I, uh, IR or bitcode generated on an ARM machine and uh, ran it here. So, uh, unfortunately, I lost my bash history a few days ago. So that's why I have to retype all of that. Uh, the other demo I had been hoping to show, and maybe this one goes better, is I now will try to build in a shroud, and yes, yeah. Um, I tried to build in a shroud, which gave me a lot of trouble, and now I built it uh, on this MD64 machine. Hello binary, and so what I did is uh, to set up the um, the clang, <coughs> and also I had to do some some hard linking hacks uh, like Sylvester before me. Set up clang to call a custom linker that um, is a wrapper around LLVM LD, and uh, I called um, yeah a after a bunch of uh bunch of tries I got it to run the whole automake system uh, within the dbuild and uh, I'm not going to show that yet because it's pretty fragile <laughs> uh, and it generated me for me this nice hello package so if I do this in a 32-bit install or if I set some more parameters it will uh, generate the hello package 
part of it at a 32 uh, um, 32 bit style bit code and if we look at using bin hello this is LNVM IR bit code now so the whole compile to ch tool chain at the moment really with a lot of hacks but it's starting to work that I really can get a Debian package out of that um, so of course this is Arch MD64 for now we haven't defined the new architecture yet and if we run this then we notice actually that GNU hello is madly internationalized <coughs> so uh, that's the stuff I have to show for now I've started compiling some um, some libraries but as I said for the libraries there's still some theoretical work to be done uh, file format to be to define to be defined for carrying some some more information onto the target machine um, what would make my life easier is uh, we've talked about that a little bit in the past if, if user bin should be multi-arched um, I, I would like to have an alternative mechanism for yeah at least uh, for, for the tool chain the multi-compiler problem that uh, we talked about before um, this is something I'm I will be also working on next because I think this is important uh, that not that you don't have to manually install some bin links into your your build environment it's better if you have a standard alternative mechanism here and um, for me it would be interesting to install to be able to co-install a GNU hello from uh, with LLVM bit code and uh, natively compiled an AMD64 GNU hello uh, but this is just something I think we can think about in general in the Debian project if this help uh, if this happens it would help along this project a bit if it doesn't um, well then it doesn't I would like some help in general though <laughs> um, when I started working on this uh, it seemed like a interesting simple idea um, it's not simple and it's a lot of work and uh, if somebody wants to help uh, with this um, please contact me uh, let's get in touch with the other uh, people I'll, uh, for now we've dis discussed um, just using reusing the package LLVM mailing list uh, and you can get in touch with me personally and talk about this everybody's invited um, if you feel like your employer might be uh, interested in, in doing something with this once it's there um, yeah I'm available for contracting, so if somebody pays me, I can put a lot of m a lot more time into this, of course. Um, yeah, and I would like to end with a quote, a uh, nice quote that I found on the LVM mailing list um, about people doing weird cross-architecture stuff with LVM. And um, I didn't note down uh, who said it, but the quote is, it isn't LLVM's fault that people want LLVM to magically solve all of C's portability problems. And I think that's important to remember. So we cannot uh, just do magic here, but we, we can use this new and exciting tool chain into new directions. And yeah, I would like uh, to get this running and, and uh, hope this you guys will be so as excited about this as I am. Are there questions? Do you think it's worthwhile to do this? Do you th uh, what do you feel? Is it more important to do the concept Arch LLVM? Is it more important to do the concept Arch Pinnacle first? Um, is, are there related ideas you want to talk about? Yeah. I mean, you can show me, but I mean, I see three versions. 
Yeah, as I said, we yeah, as I said, we would need to target a specific subset ABI. Yeah, we would define uh, ins are four bytes, yeah, little n in thirty two bit, um, as we do when we target a, a specific thirty two bit machine. Yeah, one day we might decide, okay, everybody has ARM sixty four machines now or Intel sixty four, but nobody has thirty two bit machines anymore. Um, then at that point, it might be okay to just, uh, yeah, target. Uh, say, okay, we make a new arch architecture LLVM sixty four, and now their size of is um, eight bytes. Yeah, um, I, I think what you're trying to do is that you still can link at um, against, w as I said earlier, the native, natively compiled, natively running libgtk. And with this concept, um, we will not be able to do that. I, I totally agree. For me, it's not so interesting to do that. For me, it's more interesting to see what we can build, how we can build a little LLVM universe out of uh, all the Debian source packages. Yeah? Um, but if upstream moves there, and and says okay, uh, we try to make this really architecture independent. Then of course that would be nice and really exciting. But uh, the past discussions that that I've seen uh, do not make me hopeful in this regard. Yeah, Windy. Hello again. So yeah, this is a really interesting idea, and uh, we talked early uh, already earlier this week, and uh, I did a thesis on a more compact encoding for this IR, so I had to struggle with a lot of these details, and I had to generate a lot of IR so that I could uh, get a benchmark for my compression, basically. Mm. And uh, I think that it's really ambitious to get a single IR for all Debian architectures, yeah. and you could easily just make it easier by just targeting one architecture at a time, or you could just uh, generate native code like uh, Silverster was doing with Clang, and that just save the IR to the side, because then you could still use that for debugging. You could generate the uh, debug information for that. Uh, you could do static analysis, all sorts of stuff with that. And then one by one, you could maybe start running that IR also. Okay. Yeah, uh, that would be equivalent roughly to changing the compiler tool chain in Debian to um, use Clang and rebuild all of Debian on multiple architectures. Um, I think it really depends on the use case. Yeah, and, and uh, this. Uh, um idea of uh, keeping the bitcode around for for debugging is actually I added after I talked to Lindy because it's I think it's an interesting idea um, so you use the whole tool chain you generate a target specific binary um, for me at the moment it's out of scope because I feel like that would be too much doing too much at once uh, with the resources I have but the important thing is I think that we get all the stakeholders in this talking and if we, as a, Debi as a Debian project, feel we can do that, uh, then let's do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. We are out of time, so thank you. Thank you.